I don't want to whine. I am at the LA Auto Show after all, but uh, this video takes an awful lot of work, so please click subscribe to reward my hard work. Thanks. Los Angeles is widely considered to be the car capital of the world, for better or for worse, so it makes sense that its auto show is one of the best on the planet. The 2019 show did not disappoint. There was a wide variety of vehicles at the show, nothing earth-shattering this year, but a cornucopia of stuff to experience. Some you can buy soon, others uh, not so much. There's a huge amount of product here this year. I can't get to it all. I'm just one guy with a camera, but I'll do my best. Let's start with my favorite five. Let's get this out of the way. If you want to see the mid-engine C8 Corvette for the first time, you have your choice of either the standard version or convertible here. The winner of Motor Trend's 2019 Car of the Year Award will certainly bring the crowds in. It's the first time I've seen it in person without tons of camouflage, and I have to say, there's an awful lot going on with the rump design, but starting at $60,000, if you can get one at retail, it's a performance bargain with its 6.2 liter V8 that produces 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Three seconds, zero to 60 times? Yes, please. Because the Audi RS6 Avant is a wagon, the automotive writer's secret oath requires me to love it, but you should too. Think of it as a lowered and sinister sport utility, not a station wagon. With a 48 volt mild hybrid system, its twin turbo four liter V8 packs 591 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. Yes, there's quattro all wheel drive. And yes, it's a practical machine with over 20 cubic feet of cargo room behind the folding rear seats. The cabin is exceptionally well-crafted. You could buy the Avant just to sit in it and enjoy. For rapidly, upwardly mobile families, this might be the perfect car. But it's a wagon I would keep away from teen drivers. In the I didn't see this coming from a million miles away department, the Vision Mercedes Simplex. It reimagines the original Mercedes 35 PS. Like the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical Cats, it's artistic, people are talking about it, and ultimately, I go away confused. I'll quote from the press material, this combination of mechanical beauty with intelligent digital content is described by the Mercedes-Benz designers as hyper-analog. <laughs> Okay, uh, the details are amazing. With no top though, I won't be driving it in Seattle. Uh, come to think of it, there's no talk about a drivetrain. Land Rover Defender owners are a rabid and finite group since none have been produced for a while. That's been rectified. Updated for a modern world, it looks more civilized, but Land Rover engineers insist it's the most capable Defender ever. The heavy-duty aluminum structure has impressive approach and departure angles. I'm not getting into the off-road tech, but I'll tell you that Land Rover understands the on-road shortcomings of the old ones. That's been fixed. There are two powertrains, the P300 with a 296 horsepower 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder and the P400 3-liter mild hybrid V6 with 395. The two-door 90 can seat six with a jump seat up front. The four-door 110 can be had with a very small third row. And I really like this design element in person. It's very cool. Look for Defender in the spring of 2020, starting at 50 grand. This is considered a very green show, so there are a lot of EVs, including this one that you may not have heard of. Okay, I'm kidding. The Ford Mustang Mach-E is my pick for the most significant at show. Between the early specification leaks and the controversy of using the Mustang name for a crossover, no doubt you know plenty about the Mach-E already. So I'll just recap that its range will fall between 230 and 300 miles, depending on motors and battery. It comes in rear and all-wheel drive configurations and as a high-performance GT model, which gets a grill, uh, not real. I prefer this styling to this other treatment, which looks slightly awkward to me, truth be told. Notice there are no traditional door handles. These pop up. I consider this vehicle as sort of a Rorschach test. Uh, some see it as a sleek EV performance crossover. Others, a chubby Mustang. You know who you are. 
It starts at $45,000 before any tax credits. You'll start seeing Mach-E in late 2020. Let's stick with Electric and Electrified, which makes up the lion's share of reveals. I couldn't stay for the gas-powered Mini John Cooper Works GP announcement with 301 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque, but I did snag the brand's first all-electric car since the 2008 Mini E. This one's much better and has a back seat. Some might be disappointed with my estimate of a 150-mile range from the 32.6 kilowatt-hour battery pack, but consider Considering most of these will be city cars, I see it as plenty. And it should be a hoot in town with 181 horsepower and 199 pound-feet of torque to squirt away from traffic lights with. And this Mini is Mini, it's only available as a two-door model. Audi brought the e-tron Sportback 55 Quattro. If you find the current, no pun intended, SUV design a little too boxy, both have a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. Quattro means motors for the front and back axles. The normal Sportback should travel 210 miles on charge. The 55 Quattro, not as far. It has 355 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque in normal mode, but there's a boost mode if you're feeling ludicrous. This is a fine-looking car, but personally, I'm waiting for the e-tron GT. You've heard of Bollinger Motors, right? These are serious off-road electric vehicles that look like the project that you and your dad might build over the course of a couple years if you were really good at aluminum fabrication and woodworking. Range is projected at 200 miles. These are strictly four-seaters. For power mavens, there will be 10 110-volt outlets to run tools and computers. Price? $125,000. A fully refundable $1,000 deposit will get you in line for the B1 SUV or B2 pickup. Production should start in mid-2020. Deliveries in 2021. People were very excited about Porsche's all-electric Taycan until the announced price for the first high-performance models was set at $152,000. If you pulled your deposit because of sticker shock, go back to the dealership. The Taycan 4S starts at a much more reasonable price. If $105,000 is affordable to you, there are two batteries available. A standard 4S makes 522 horsepower on overboost. When equipped with the bigger battery, it rises to 562 horses. Deliveries start in the summer of 2020. This car is wicked fun to drive. Porsche had another electric car here, but you won't be buying a Formula E racing vehicle then, will you? The 99X is fascinating to look at. Good to see Porsche getting into Formula racing after over 30 years. The big news with Chevy's Bolt EV is the addition of a V6 plug-in hybrid model. Uh, kidding. Uh, 2020 models have bumped the range up to an EPA-estimated 259 miles. Still, I think I would have been happier with a new color choice for the dash. Look at all of these Hyundai Ionics. They might all appear to be the same, but this one is a hybrid, this one is a plug-in hybrid with 29 miles of all-electric range, and this one is a pure EV, which you can note on your spotter's guide as getting a unique grill. A couple things here, all of them get a revised interior that looks richer and a touchscreen interface slightly larger than a standard iPad. The big news is that the EV gets a welcome bump in range to 170 miles from 124. That will make it much more appealing to people considering an electric car. These should be trickling into showrooms in the next couple weeks. I already did a piece on Toyota's new second-generation hydrogen-powered Mirai. Flanking it is something much more mainstream, the RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid. Toyota says the Prime can travel 39 miles on battery alone before the 2.5-liter four-cylinder is forced to take over. The bigger lithium-ion pack is mounted in the floor. Uh, not sure what that does to cargo space. It's the fastest RAV4 available by a significant margin, but you're going to have to wait until the summer of 2020 for that performance bump. I like the small Lincoln Corsair outside and in. It's got a beautiful interior. The Grand Touring model means it's a plug-in hybrid. And you might be thinking that makes sense since there's going to be a plug-in hybrid Escape and they're on the same architecture. But 
they're different. The Escape version is front drive only, where the Lincoln gets an all-wheel drive setup. The back wheels are powered by an electric motor. Interesting to see the two brands stand apart. The 14.4 kilowatt hour battery pack should take it 26 miles on a charge. You'll spot it by blue trim and an extra fuel door. Hey, electricity is fuel. It's coming in the summer of 2020. SUVs and crossovers? Of course there's a bunch of them here. It's what everybody's buying these days. Kia's new Seltos is much more rugged than I would have thought. Oh wait, that's a show treatment that few will copy. Here is what you'll be buying. Unlike the Soul, Seltos gets optional all-wheel drive and 7.2 inches of ground clearance to take on Subaru Crosstrek. The cabin materials look decent for a car slotting in between Soul and Sportage in size, similar to Nero, which looks like it's getting a timeout way over there. Choose between a 146 horsepower four-cylinder paired to a CVT transmission, or if you want all-wheel drive, a 175 horse 1.6 liter turbo engine hooked up to a seven speed dual clutch. When it arrives around February 2020, expect a starting price of $22,000. Also arriving early in 2020 is the all new Buick Encore GX. It's a little bigger than the first one, powered by two different turbocharged three cylinder engines producing either 137 or 155 horsepower. There are two transmissions, a CVT on the smaller engine, a nine speed on the bigger one. A couple things here. The interior of the GX gets a solid step up, uncomfortably close to what Cadillac is offering in the XT4, which should be better, but I digress. And the old Encore will still be available, causing confusion. GM, do you not remember the Cutlass debacle? The CRV is hardly new, but Honda has announced that the very popular crossover will be available with a hybrid powertrain. It delivers a total system output of 212 horsepower. The 1.5 liter turbo model is rated at 190, so there's a potential performance bump if the weight gain is kept in check. Honda figures a 50% improvement in gas mileage that would put its average fuel economy at around 40 mpg. Impressive. FYI, all CRVs get a freshening for the 2020 model year with a revised interior. In the less can give you more product category, the Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport is nearly three inches shorter than the standard Atlas SUV and 2.3 inches lower, plus it loses row number three. Cross Sport is a five seater, a 276 horsepower V6 and 235 horsepower four cylinder are mated up to an eight speed automatic transmission. All wheel drive is available, of course. I forgot to get a shot of the cargo area, but it's quite large. It's very useful. Look for it in the spring of 2020. Concept cars. There aren't nearly as many as there are at the Tokyo Motor Show, but there are a few here in LA. The Lexus LF30 was shown at the Tokyo Motor Show. As you can see, it's had its passport stamped. Lexus doesn't have a production EV yet. So, well, actually it will in Europe and China with the lithium ion motivated UX300E. The LF's concept battery is solid state and it charges wirelessly. Autonomous too, <laughs> probably flies and makes breakfast. Concepts often hint at future design languages, but much of the LF30's look is impractical and take a gander at that spindle grill. My, what a big lighted face you have, LF. While this show isn't as hard to maneuver as Tokyo and New York, you can see it's still quite a challenge to get the silk coming off of a car, unless you're camped out an hour ahead of time. Here, Hyundai is unveiling the Vision T concept. It's my strategy to come back an hour after the unveil, so it's easier to get shots once the mob has moved on. I like this one. The lines are strong and decisive. While Hyundai says this is a plug-in hybrid, it's a concept, so it could be powered by rubber bands for all we know. We'll see soon enough if the T in Vision T stands for Tucson, and if the Tucson gets a plug-in powertrain. Wouldn't mind the next generation looking something just like this. To infinity and beyond just gasoline, the Infiniti QS Inspiration is a series hybrid with the electric motors driving the wheels. The gasoline engine isn't connected to the drive wheels. It runs a generator that supplies power and charges a battery pack. There's regenerative braking too. In Japan, the Nissan brand calls this setup 
ePower, and it's been very popular. Upscale Infinities should use this kind of powertrain for performance, not necessarily efficiency. I have to believe the technology will get a new fancy moniker. Kia might have shown the Habanero concept at the 2019 New York Auto Show first, but it's welcome to any auto show at any time. It's a great looking concept with all sorts of practical cues that would be right at home on production cars. With gullwing doors, pedestal seats, and a lighted floor, it'll never reach production like this, but it's a cool piece of art. You'd never know Americans don't like wagons when stopping by the Volkswagen stand. I had a hard time getting a clean view at the all-electric ID Space Vision since it was swarmed for hours. Lighted touch pads open the doors. Uh, people love playing with them. I'd like to see how those work in Minnesota winters, though. And there's more touch surfaces inside. No shortage of those, to be sure. VW says the seats are made from a material called apple skin that's produced partly from the scraps left over from making apple juice. ID Space Vision is said to be motivated by a rear 275 horse motor, but a second one could be added for all wheel drive. First seen at the Geneva show, the Alfa Romeo tonal concept is not only a stylish, smaller sibling to the Stelvio, it shows Alfa is thinking hard along the lines of a plug-in hybrid powertrain. The company says, don't worry though, it will be used for performance. With classic styling cues and big teledial wheels, the tonal can't come to production soon enough, and no doubt you'll be seeing something very similar to this in the next year or two at showrooms. Acura's Type S concept is very tuned in to what the next generation TLX might look like, and it signals the return of a turbocharged V6 Type S performance model. Obviously, there needs to be side view mirrors here, but other than that, please don't change a thing, Acura. This grace and minimalism is exactly the design the brand needs. And while I'm asking, please get rid of the forgettable TLX moniker. It sounds like a crossover. What a terrific way to usher the legend name back. Or even Integra. Take your pick. All right, back to production vehicles. Uh, looking for a good time? Uh, enthusiasts, you have a lot to cheer about at the LA Auto Show. A reminder, there's the new C8 VAT. So much good stuff at the Audi booth. If your significant other gets car sick during high performance maneuvers, <laughs> they'll be as green as the RS Q8 here. 22 inch wheels? Wow. Uh, looking forward to hearing the twin turbocharged 600 horsepower, four liter V8 engine pump out 590 pound feet of torque. An eight speed automatic and quattro all wheel drive are good for 3.7 second zero to 60 runs. And as expected, the interior is very nicely trimmed out. Hey, it's an Audi. Porsche was showing off the new 434 horsepower Macan Turbo. You'll search for errands to do with the new 2.9 liter six cylinder twin turbo engine and this sport SUV's supernatural handling. If you've not driven a Macan, you really should. The driving dynamics are very balanced. And submitted for your approval in racing yellow is the 718 Cayman GT4. It runs with a naturally aspirated six cylinder boxer engine with 414 horsepower and and 309 pound-feet of torque, plus a six-speed manual transmission. You'll need to know how to drive a stick if you want this car. Uh, you'll also need at least 100 grand to buy it, and that's before options. BMW brought a number of choices to the show. Let's start with two. This is the new 2 Series Grand Coupe, kids. Look, it has four doors, he said about a coupe. There will be two twos, the 228 horsepower 228i and the 301 horse M235i, both with xDrive all-wheel drive. The transmission is an 8-speed automatic, rear passenger legroom is close to the 3 Series sedan. It comes standard with lane departure warning and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Look for it in March of 2020. The M8 Grand Coupe and more powerful M8 Grand Coupe competition are headed our way, but fair warning, the standard 600 horsepower M8 starts at $130,000. The 116 horse competition model begins at 143 grand, so uh, BMW really does stand for bring more wallet here. The twin turbocharged 4.4 liter V8 uses a hot V setup and sends power to all four tires via an eight speed automatic. That all wheel drive system is rear wheel biased. 
Luxury? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that. This is Los Angeles after all. The Lexus LC500 hardtop starts life as a beautiful car with a distinctive roofline. The new convertible is far more than a simple chop job. Adding just over 200 pounds, there's a new die cast aluminum suspension brace and other structural braces had to be relocated. This special edition that you're looking at is limited to 100 copies. Blue has never looked so moneyed. These could slot into performance or SUV categories, but for running to Whole Foods in Los Angeles, Mercedes provides luxury rapid transit. You want a two-row high-performance luxury SUV? Check out the AMG GLE 63S. Its 4-liter V8 twin-turbocharged engine generates 603 horsepower and has an EQ Boost starter generator electric motor between the engine and transmission that adds up to 21 horsepower, powers the 48-volt electrical system, and maximizes efficiency. All-wheel drive, air suspension with adaptive dampers, and a snappy twin-clutch 9-speed transmission keeps performance high. You might buy it only for the interior, which features the big screens that Mercedes likes so much. Uh, well, I like them too. Now, if you need to move seven people very, very quickly, step up to the new three-row AMG GLS 63. It features the same powertrain as the GLE 63, but in a larger, roomier package. And the interior is even nicer. Honestly, the cabin is just gorgeous. The craftsmanship is second to none. Style, luxury, and thrust do not come cheap. The GLE 63S begins at $110,000. The GLS 63, 128 large. Let's face it, not everybody can afford a luxury ride. Budget vehicles are important. Not an awful lot new here this year on that front. This is the 8th generation Nissan Sentra. Uh, no, wait, that's the Versa. This is the Sentra. Nissan is doing the Russian doll thing with its sedans. Hard to quickly tell them apart. But the big news isn't the sheet metal, it's the cabin. No, this isn't the inside of a Maxima. Sentra gets a seriously upgraded cockpit. Loads of stitching and new insulation to keep the noise down should give this car a more premium feel. The 2-liter 4-cylinder is more powerful with 149 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque. Fuel economy is apparently better. No manual gearbox, though. All models use a CVT. Look for it in January. Americans will get their first glimpse of Mazda's CX-30 in the flesh, which replaces the diminutive CX-3. Much more grown up than the outgoing car, I predict that this will instantly become the brand's most popular vehicle. For one thing, it seats four much more comfortably now. And I put it in this section instead of the crossover category because the price starts at around $23,000 for a front drive model. That's less than a Mazda 3 hatchback. It can be optioned up to the 30 grand level if you go with the fanciest of four trim levels. The only powertrain option is all-wheel drive. The U.S. is restricted to a 186 horsepower four-cylinder and six-speed automatic. Wrapping up, under these silks is the redesign of the terrific Genesis G90 luxury sedan. Sorry, I couldn't stay for the reveal. And finally, don't forget to stop by and see the Bugatti Chiron. Uh, this might be my favorite Lego piece ever built, considering it's not made with only traditional bricks. Imagine the time in engineering that went into this and all the other LA themed stuff at the Lego display. Super cool. The show runs through December 1st and is well worth the price of admission, less than the cost of many art museums. And I'll argue that's what this show is. Well, hope you got something out of my look at the 2019 LA Auto Show. I think a lot of you can't come here, um, especially those who live in Maine. You're not going to fly all the way out here for this show. I'm glad that I can help you out. A reminder, if you like my service, <laughs> click subscribe and then that little bell notification so you don't miss any of my coverage. All right, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.